welcome along. So, going to walk you through the MMA judging scoring criteria and just explain in detail how us judges look at that. And then I'm going to go through round by round the Matthew Elliott, Ryan Shelley bout from Cage Warriors the other night using that knowledge. So, I've been judging score judging bouts uh, since roughly around the time that this scoring criteria was implemented in August 2016. And the way we judge bouts is that you judge those rounds individually. Round ones takes place between fighter A and fighter B. At the end of the round, you write down what score you gave for that round. You hand it over, wipe the slate clean, and then start the process again for round two. So you basically try and clear your mind of any bias. You work through um, that round, uh, look at it objectively, use the scoring criteria, which is detailed here. And then we hand those scorecards over at the end okay so the prioritized criteria as you can see here there's three levels three tiers and they are listed in order of priority so the first one effective striking and grappling is the primary scoring criteria now you will literally just use this criteria rather than two two and three which i'm about to go through now you'll use this unless literally nothing happens okay so You'll pick a winner of the round based off this. The winner will get 10 points. The loser will get nine or less. Uh, but, but, but effective aggressiveness is criteria number two. Fighting area control is criteria number three. Okay. As you can see here under effective aggressiveness, it says aggressively making attempts to finish the fight. The key term is effective. Chasing after an opponent with no effective result or impact should not render in the judge's assessments. Effective aggressiveness is only to be assessed, and that's underlined, if effective striking and grappling is 100% equal for both competitors. Now, in nearly every round you'll ever see, you won't find striking and grappling both 100% equal, unless it's about like... Rose Namajunas and Carla Esparza, which happened recently, where nothing happens. Francis Ngannou and um, what's his name? Derek Lewis had a bout like that a few years ago as well. But those are extremely rare. The third criteria, fighting area control, is assessed by determining who is dictating the pace, place and position of the match. So that would be like, you're getting desperate here. Nothing's landing. Nobody's got a hold of anyone. Nobody's managed to do anything. But one guy had better footwork than the other as it was maybe leading the dance or making the other guy back off or, you know, react to him. But as it says underneath it here, fighting area control shall only be assessed if effective striking, grappling and effective aggressiveness is 100% equal for both competitors. This will be assessed very rarely. I have never had to look at that criteria in five, six years of judging hundreds, if not thousands of fights. Okay, so that's that just gives you an idea of what, what areas we're looking at. So we're basically for 99 percent of fights, you're going to narrow your winner of each round down to this top um, effect, uh, prioritized criteria. Effective striking and grappling. Striking and grappling are, are weighed equally. Okay, and I'll explain to you exactly how we look at them. So it says here. Legal blows that have immediate or cumulative impact with the potential to contribute toward the end of the match with the immediate weighing in more heavily than the cumulative impact. So before we move on, let's think about that. The immediate weighing in more heavily than the cumulative. So if I'm moving around the cage and I land somewhere between 10 and 20 strikes on you and there's nothing overly powerful, nothing that staggers you, nothing that knocks you off, uh, stumbles you, nothing that knocks your head back or dazes you. And then you hit me with a straight right down the pipe and you literally stun me and I go, go stumbling across the cage. That one strike is going to weigh more heavily when it comes to scoring the round or picking a winner for the round than my 20 strikes. Now, if it was just about how many strikes that person landed, hey, he landed more strikes than his opponent, therefore he should win the round. You would not need judges. You would just need people to keep the stats and that would be it, okay? But we don't do it that way. We weigh impactful stuff more heavily than cumulative. So if you're landing body shots on somebody and nothing that's immediately impactful, like it's not causing them to double over, but they're the type of things that are probably going to pay dividends in the fourth or fifth round. You know that type of work where it's going to, okay, it's going to take his gas tank out later. That won't weigh as heavily when it comes to the scoring at the end of the round, if the other person has landed some shots that knocked your head back a little bit, 
okay or that that maybe caused you to stumble or you know caused some damage maybe someone hit you with an elbow that cut your eye it's what's more immediately visibly impactful over the cumulative okay so we'll move on successful execution of takedowns sub attempts reversals achievement of positions that uh, produce immediate or cumulative impact with the potential to contribute to the end of match with the immediate weighing more heavily than the cumulative so this is applying to the grappling too here's an example if i take somebody down and i basically dominate him positionally for four uh, minutes i'm not landed shots but like grappling you know i'm i'm, I'm basically all over the guy and I'm, 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 um, I'm passing his guard and getting to good positions blah 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 and then he catches me in an arm bar and he gets my arm extended the legs are across my face and i have to battle like hell to get out of there i'm grimacing and the fight's almost over, but the bell goes, or I escape out of there. The immediate, something that was more immediately closer to winning the bout, will weigh more heavily than the cumulative impact. So my opponent, therefore, would probably win that round 10-9, because his, um, his grappling was way more effective in the immediate sense than mine was in the cumulative sense, okay? It shall be noted that a successful takedown is not merely a changing of position, but the establishment of an attack from the use of the takedown. So what they're saying is a takedown isn't counted as successful if you're just using it to change position. So you got somebody from standing to the ground and that was kind of it. You basically held them there. So that's not considered a successful takedown. If you get them there and establish an attack from that takedown, now it's considered a successful. So if I take somebody down and I start landing shots, like causing, you know, damage and blah, 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 posturing up and landing a decent amount of shots. Or I go from there to a better position. Maybe I, I get to the mount or I get to the back and, and, and you know, cause them real problems. That would con we would consider effective grappling alongside, you know, submission attempts and so on. Top and bottom position fighters are assessed more on the impactful, effective result of their actions more so than their position. So from your back or from the top position, top position is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. You don't win a bout by having top position. It's what you're doing with that position. Are you on your back or on your top? Are you doing something from there to win the round? This criterion will be the deciding factor in a high majority of decisions when scoring a round. The next two criteria, which are below, must be treated as a backup and used only when effective striking grappling is 100% equal for the round. And as I said, a judge is there to pick a winner, not to take the easy way out and say, ah, well, look, they were fairly equal. I could give a 10-10 or, you know, I'll have to go and look at the secondary criteria because I just can't be, I'm not brave enough to, to put my, hang my hat on picking a winner here. Your job is there with your vantage point close to the cage where you can see and feel and hear the impact of those strikes you're there for a reason. You're there to pick a winner based on this first scoring criteria. So from there, we're going to go and we're going to watch a fight. And again, full disclosure, don't know either of these guys, but let's go and watch this bout. Them. In the cage, Warriors, featherweight division. We'll turn the commentary down Literally a little bit. So blue. Elliot's Fancy in the Y here. He's just come out straight. They're straight in. There's a nice leg kick from Elliot. Bit of impact on that one. The event, we both said this is potentially our both our guys are kind of just trying to find their openings here, for shots. Yeah, and the reason why I think is just because the two guys are so experienced. And um, like we're seeing now, they're just non-stop. Little very, knee up the very, middle. Very, very Nothing overly impactful here. Like no one's, no one's been, you know, feeling the impact of these shots. Nothing's landing clean just yet. Elliot gets his opponent to the floor, so we've got a change of position. Remember, this will only be scored if he does something with it. Advances to a better spot, gets closer to finishing the fight. So Shelley's done a good job there, recovering that half guard. So no one's pot like Elliot's not posturing up to land shots because it's not he hasn't stabilised the position yet. So the, the close guard now has been recovered. There's a nice little elbow to the side of the head from Shelley. That one didn't land so clean, and neither did that one from Elliot. It's like both of those seem to land on the shoulders. So what Shelley's doing now from the bottom is he's locked up a body triangle. And he's looking to keep his opponent down. You can see he's got the hand on the back of the head, not allowing him to posture up. 
Elliott doesn't seem like he's getting up. Now, that elbow didn't land overly clean either. Again, we're looking for immediately impactful. Not stuff that's kind of landing, you know, and it needs to be. There's a good attempt in the scramble. To take the back, but unsuccessful. He's in again. He's got that body lock still. He's got around for it. He's looking for a double. A guy of the wrestling caliber of Elliot up against the cage. Yeah, just wearing down on the opponent. But again, remember, this stuff only scores if you use it to get to a position and cause some damage. A nice little knee to the head there. And again, we're down to the floor. Again, just a change of position so far because nothing, there's been no advancement from it and no damage caused from it. You do see takedowns that are scored for immediately damaging impact when people are literally thrown and land on their head or something, but again, those are relatively rare. You see it once in a while, but not that frequently. So we're back to where we were. There's been there's a nice little elbow to the head. There's literally been just two impactful shots so far in this round. Like two to the head, two elbows to the head from Shelley. But that see that elbow from Elliot didn't really land flush, it was kind of half blocked and there wasn't much immediate impact. But the body triangle from close guard the Shelly That's a slightly cleaner one. And there's a miss from Elliot. I hate that position. So we're seeing a guy on top here and to the uninformed eye to be thinking, Jesus, he's he's dominating this round because he's on top. He hasn't done anything based on the scoring criteria so far to win this round. Now it is razor close. You're literally looking at two or three pretty clean-ish elbows that landed from Shelley compared to, you know, not much else really from either fighter. He can't. He can't get a sweep. He, all he can do is maybe strike from the, the bottom or hold Maddie there, which he has been doing. So for Shelley to get out from underneath, which you'll see now, is left foot on the hip. So you can see the level of caging. It's not caging, but there's there, there's not a great upper window of opportunity for either fighter to land a lot of shots like there. Every time Elliot goes to throw, Shelley's turning and nothing's landing overly clean. Again, Shelley's only there's a, a nice little elbow to the side of the head. There's been about, I think, three of those so far. Another one there. And those little elbows will be they're, they're, they're going to be enough if there's nothing coming from the other side to win a round, you know what I mean? In a, in a tight, close round, they're not massively damaging, they're not hugely impactful, but they are making his opponent have to try to defend them. And again, there's nothing coming back from the other side. Elliot has elected not to try to pass the guard. Touches the body there, like hits the body, but again, you're looking at what's immediately impactful. You need, you need to land some damaging blows here, you know? Going into the final 30 seconds here. Only one fighter has landed effective strikes to the head so far. I would like to see Ryan Shelley maybe trap an overhook when he has the feet on the hips. Pop up for the triangle, there's 15 seconds left, you're down around, you got to try something here. Quite a tight nothing round, there's a nice shot now from Elliot, that forearm looked like it landed on the mush of Elliot. Well, Shelley's brother was, uh, was cheered by There you go, the end of round one, now I think one judge, I could be wrong on this, one judge gave it to Shelley, and two gave it to Elliot, or the other way around, and you could basically make a case for each fighter having won that round, so... It was very close because very little of no happened. Um, and when, when rounds are like that, you, you can't really be saying that someone dominated a round because, to the, like I said, to the untrained eye, who's just watching that, you're going to see someone holding, I'll jump forward 30 seconds, someone holding the other person on the ground or having top position and think, you're going to assume, if you don't know the scoring criteria, that they've dominated that round. Whereas in reality, not really, because nothing nothing has happened there there was no progression of position there was nothing done with the takedown and as we've seen in black and white in the scoring criteria that's what it's all about a takedown like this doesn't score anything unless you do something with that takedown so we're back down again hit our power shots from both sides so far we're looking for ones that are going to land clean Let's see what we can see now in this round. No, I haven't watched rounds two and three back on this fight yet. So I'm basically I'm watching this with an open mind. And 
and if he switches, yeah, he's got the butterfly in. Looking for someone to do something yeah, in my, in, if I'm sitting in that judge's seat. Do something that me, means I can give that fight to you. Elliot with a firm grip on the neck there as Shelley tries to get back to his feet. He does. Nice on the hook. So, so still nothing has happened in the round. One round in. There's basically nothing of note has happened here that you would class as immediately impactful striking or grappling. I think Shelley needs to drop his head here on the inside. Um, of Maddie's chin. These little Maybe shoulder bumps, they're not, the body lock to they're not going to be control. enough, you know. They're, off shots with his, uh, with his free they're uncomfortable, they're nasty, they could be on the end of, but they're not immediately impactful, really. Like I said, we're looking for stuff that's landing clean on somebody. Same as a foot stomp, you know. They're annoying little shots. Take a leg out from underneath Elliot. I like to see him throw more knees, more to the leg, more foot stomps, more volume here. Because Again, the these mini, are just touching magic. the body. Sort of just That's the difference here. between cumulative and immediately impactful, which we spoke about when we read through the scoring criteria. So there's not much here that a judge can hang, hang their hat on and say, yeah, he won the round because of this. Nothing really yet so far. We're now two minutes into the round and there's been no impactful striking or grappling as of yet. We did see a takedown, but nothing came of the takedown. It wasn't used to land shots. It wasn't used to progress position, so it doesn't score. Not much longer is the answer. Now, now this is where you really believe that Shelley wants it, but he's got to stop nice. Elliot getting nice inside of it. Nice, Uchi Mata. I don't think he got up the middle, so I think it was a Haragashi. But uh, yeah, so he's got his opponent to the floor, and he's looking to establish a good position from here. But he's failed to do so because his opponent is after getting up. So again, not a scoring takedown because didn't do something with it. He's more concerned with and this, this the is clearly defined the scoring man. criteria. This is what we're looking at. He's dominant right. positionally. And so far, but nothing has landed really in this round, so it's going to be difficult to give the round to his opponent. Now, if his opponent is to land something from here, he could easily steal the round just from having landed more damaging shots, but he hasn't done that yet either. When Matthew's getting him on the cage, he's getting double on the hooks. When you have double on the hooks, it's really hard to drop in for a single or a double from that position. So that's how uh, Ryan's um, able to reverse him so uh, easily. And you can imagine you're sitting in a judge's seat now and you're waiting for impactful strikes. So you get rounds like this where Ryan Shelley. Nothing happens really of that referee, note. It's for a it's tough because you're literally just wanting you're wanting someone to start to land some shots. Again, Boko's trying to land shots, no real success so far. A nice little left hook from Shelley, but it's not massively clean. Now, there we go. Elbows to the head. First impactful shots of the whole round with one minute to go. And again, to someone who hasn't read the scoring criteria, you're looking at one guy positionally dominating and assuming, Jesus, he's dominating this fight. He's really, really not in the scoring criteria so far. Nice, nice switch of base there, and he just got him to the floor. Transitioning now into a decent position, but recovery of half guard, so he didn't actually get the position. Just under 20 seconds left in the round. Take your toes out of the fence. Take your toes out of the fence. And Shelley's being warned then not to hook his toes through the fence. That's 10 seconds at a round. So, looking at this round, there's literally been those two elbows from Shelley were the only impactful strikes in the whole round. A couple of takedowns from Elliot, but he literally did nothing with those takedowns. Now, you may agree or may not agree with the fact that that is not enough to win rounds, but that's absolutely irrelevant. That's like saying, oh, I think Man City beat Arsenal because they created 25 chances and Arsenal only created one. If Arsenal scored that one chance and Man City didn't put Anton in the back of the net, they might be the better team, but they did not win it based on the scoring criteria of soccer. So this applies here. 
you're looking at repeated pressure, repeated takedowns, repeated positional dominance, but on the literal black and white scoring criteria, nothing was done with those takedowns to get you closer to finishing the fight, so therefore they're not considered effective scoring effective grappling effective takedowns so now we're going into a third round and for me there we've had two razor close rounds and i see shelly coming out on top of those although i will say the first round you're probably going to see you could i mean you could have 10 judges scoring that first round you might have four or five scoring one way four or five scoring the other way depending on their vantage point cage side Bit of striking dis on display here so what Australia. what was to the naked eye or to the untrained eye an absolute robbery or whatever a lot of people were saying after watching this i'm looking at that with experience of working within this criteria for years and years and i'm looking at that and seeing my god these rounds are so close they're being decided by one or two shots so far and i have shelly two rounds up you could you make a case for 1-1, one, one. you can make a case for two rounds for Shelley. So we're back in here again, again, tremendous, tremendous strength, tremendous technique there on that takedown. And look what Elliot's doing. He's sitting down here. Now these little shots, nothing of, nothing of those has landed just yet. It's like a token attempt to just sort of cause disruption for his opponent. There's a nice elbow, look, two nice elbows again from Shelley. And this is this is the difference. If a judge knows what they're looking at and knows how the scoring criteria is being implemented, the difference here is that this fighter knows how it's being implemented. The fighter on top doesn't seem to understand the scoring criteria. He's trying to try, kind of trying to work a pass now. Easier said than done. There you go. Yeah, you've got to give Ryan Shelley credit here. He's, he's not just accepting this position, he's making it... So again, we're, we're where we were before in the first two rounds. We're down on the ground. One fighter kind of seemingly happy to stay in this closed guard. I mean, there's a little token attempt like this at trying to get out, but he's not really committing to anything, is he? Um, the other fighter seemingly happy to stay on bottom without really committing to try to sweep his opponent. But the only strikes of no that have landed to the head have been not these elbows but the, the couple we saw earlier in the round these ones are enough now see the way he's chipping away with these and you're seeing those ones coming from Elia he's kind of hitting them as his opponent is turning away all the time rolling with them neither fighter is doing enough to clearly win the round but if you're looking at this as a, a contest a match you're halfway through round three now and reading it Looking off the scoring criteria, the only week. thing that's considered impactful striking or grappling are these elbows from the back Shelley from Ryan Shelley. Now, from the bottom. now as I said, I watched this at the time, didn't have my judge's hat on. I watched it at the time and I thought to myself, there's every chance they're going to score this fight to the guy from the bottom and all hell is going to break loose. Because the vast majority of people watching it have not read the scoring criteria and don't understand it. So, I kind of knew this shitstorm was about to happen, but it is what it is. Now, see the way he's just peppering elbows. In a lot of fights, that's not enough to win a fight. But in a fight like this, where the guy on top isn't going anywhere, isn't doing anything, he's, he's beating himself from the top position. And I, 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 I kind of think if the guy on top knew the scoring criteria, better advice to just hang on he could go ahead he could go back and do, do this fight over and win this fight no problem he's just presuming he's in top because he's in the top position and got takedowns that he's won that fight that's not how bouts are scored has not been for six years almost a lot of the shots i'm seeing from matthew elliott here very very little has landed from clean from inside that guard He's lifting and trying to roll a shot over and his opponent's rolling with it. And you can see those elbows are landing clean to the head. They're not nice to going to kill him. They're not going to cause much damage. But when there's nothing really that impactful coming from the other side, it's going to be enough. So we can see Ryan Shelley not really committing to sweeping his opponent. He seems happy enough nice to just right chip away here because he's confident that he's 
doing enough. See, th those are way more impactful yeah, from the bottom than they are the guy from the top. This is just frustrating for three rounds. You know, they're not the biggest shots hitting you. They're relatively okay, but you just cannot get out from underneath. Like Reds are saying on commentary there, they're not the biggest shots. Just imploring Shelley but to throw when you're weighing them against what's coming from the guy on top, it's more than enough to, to steal a round. So this is again like the analogy of Man City conceding a shitty goal against Arsenal. But they didn't put the ball in the back of the net themselves, no matter how much of the ball they had, how many shots and goal they had. It's not enough to go and win a match. And you can argue about it, you can say you don't agree with it, but it's clear black and white criteria. This is how a bout is scored. So the guy might look like he's dominating, as Reds are saying on commentary there, he might look like he's dominating, but when it comes down to the actual black and white scoring criteria, he didn't. He really, really didn't. He didn't land anything really impactful whatsoever over the three rounds. The takedowns, as it says in the scoring criteria, are only scored if you do something progressive from that position. You do something effective from that position. And we can see there that Mattuelli didn't do anything effective from those positions over the three rounds. He got multiple takedowns. But the way MMA is scored, that's not how, how, how you're going to win about these days. So, hope that helps, guys. But that's, it, what, that's from an official's perspective of what you're looking at, fighter A versus fighter B. One fighter seemed to know the rules, the other fighter didn't. You can agree with it, you can disagree with it. Most people seem to be uh, in a stage where they're gonna disagree with it. It's absolutely irrelevant. It's absolutely irrelevant what you think. Um, this is how it's scored. It's, it's clear, it's concise, it's in black and white. So it's not um, a matter of subjective. It's not uh left up to the discretion of the officials this is clearly defined scoring criteria hope that helps don't shoot me don't hate the fucking messenger that's just how it goes all right good luck